Good evening, one and all. We welcome you all to the three days international one Mahotso forest festival, health, well-being, environment, and sustainable development 2023, commemorating Azadi Kamrit Mahotso nation celebrating 75 years of independence, India's G20 presidency, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2015 to 2030, and one Mahotso, which is celebrated from 1st July to 7th July. So today being the last date of the Forest Festival or Van Mahotso in collaboration with Sri Holistic Health Foundation India and Sri Research Institute Center for Art, Sciences and Wellbeing and all other collaborators. Before we start today's sessions, let's take the blessings of Almighty. The blessings of Almighty, we shall continue with uh, today's sessions. So, today we are commemorating one Mahotso 2023, which is being celebrated from 1st July to 7th July every year. So we might wonder, hope uh, we all are aware of one Mahotso and those uh, who are not aware of uh, just uh, will give you a little glance on why this one Mahotso is celebrated. Basically, this is a tree planting festival, you know, plantation festival which is being celebrated in the first week of July, that is 1st July to 7th July every year to spread awareness of forest conservation and also to save the environment. So lakhs and crores of trees and plants, saplings are planted all over the country during this week. It is also known as forest fish. The first Indian National Tree Plantation Week was organized by our Randava Punjabi botanist from 20 to 27 July 1947. He was inspired by the ideas of the Forest Week Festival of Tree Days in various countries. So then, the then Del Police, Delhi Police Commissioner Urshid Ahmed Khan inaugurated the first event on one Mahotso the planting of Bahunia saplings on 20 July 1947 to stress the impact of deforestation on flora and fauna. 
later day pandit nehru and lady mount batter did planting at the kutub minar and pandit nehru spoke to say it was matter of surprise to him that so far no interest has been taken in tree plantation large tracts of the country had become desert so with the negligence of the people who cut trees without realizing their greatest value so there should be a law that no one should cut a tree unless he had first planted a new one in its place at the same time mahatma gandhi also added to his prayer speech so others could copy the practices and understand the importance of forest deforestation led to diminished rainfall moreover trees required little care except in early stages an acre of land used for growing fruit trees would yield more fruit than a crop of wheat on the same area so the tradition was continued and declared as a national activity in 1950 by the minister of food and agriculture kanya lal manek lal munshi who moved it to first week of july and named it as van mahots so trees and forests plays very crucial role in maintaining ecological balance and providing oxygen to human beings on the planet and it also provides habitats rich biodiversity ecosystems and shelter to many flora and fauna so the celebration of one mahotsav week reminds that we must protect conserve and promote forest and stop deforestation it emphasizes the practice of three r rule reduce reuse and recycle forest and trees provide many advantages which are essential for life on the earth not just for humans but all the living and living and non living beings it is the source of food for many humans and more than that many animals and alternative resources of fuel it also maintains ecological balance prevent soil erosion improve air quality and uh, consumes carbon dioxide and releases oxygen which is essential for the living beings and climate amelioration conserves water reduces drought preserves soil erosion and reduces pollution supports wildlife flora and fauna and sustain biodiversity so on this suggestion let's all together plant more and more trees as industrialization and urbanization is leading to a massive deforestation at a large scale and deforestation is a serious concern hence one month mouths of be aims to bring more and more people together to grow and save forests in the country so the first week of july is the right time for planting trees in most parts of the nation as since monsoon joins this time so as the monsoon season starts there will be rains so there is no dearth of water because the basic essential for the plant to survive and grow is water so we need to regularly water at the initial stages once it goes break to a uh, big of enough size then there is no need of watering as the roots go deep into the soil it extracts water from within the ground even though depending on the climate depending on the soil and depending on the various aspects it may still require watering but most of the requirements are in early days of trees or plantation so on this day
let's all together plant trees and saplings. And this event is also organized. to promote tree plantation. And this was organized on the last day so that whoever has taken the tree plantation, they can take a photo or video and talk about it, about the kind of plant or the type of plant or the name of the plant or sapling. They have planted, or if not, they have planted in this week at least. If they are maintaining, if they have planted some, some tree or sapling and they are taking care of them, so they can also present about that, showing photo or video, uh, if possible, both, and explaining how, what inspired to plant that and how you are taking care of it and if that is a fruit bearing, flower bearing, and other uh, you no know, products, if that is yielding, you can also talk about it and what is the significance of having that. Uh, it may be economical benefit, social benefit, spiritual benefits, medicinal benefits, anything regarding the planet, whichever is applicable, and share so that we can promote tree plantation in this week, and also we can motivate, inspire others to take up. And this is a wonderful opportunity. Unfortunately, most good things have less takers. No, for bad things, people come in crowds and lakhs and crores. But unfortunately, if you take a good initiative, often we see people lagging behind. So that should be quite opposite. You know, whenever there is a good thing that is happening, we should come forward, even without an invitation. But unfortunately, the scenario is different. Whenever someone takes good initiative, people lag behind. And whenever something wrong is happening, like corruption, like other things, you no know, people are ahead of everything, even without uh, no one is inviting, also people unfortunately keep engaging proactively. So, we need to, you know, uh, take care of all these things because without nature, without forest, we are already facing the impact and of uh, this deforestation, lack of proper irrigational, sufficient irrigational water from rivers and rising temperatures every year and rising sea levels, melting glaciers, increase in temperature, all and many other climate change is impacting everyone. Now it's a high time that we every second we release carbon dioxide. Every second we consume oxygen. So it's our responsibility. We always keep talking of our rights. This is my right. That is my right. This is my, uh, you know, my priority. And this is what I need to get. All these things. But how many of us talk about our duties for our rights? We also have fundamental duties enshrined in the constitution with the amendments, right? We always talk about our rights, but why don't we fight for our duties? Because we are interested in taking only, we are not interested in giving. We have taken so much from the nature and we have exploited, inflicted pain, suffering, cruelty towards the nature and environment. And today we are paying for that in various forms. And it's high time that we give back, at least be selfish. 
all of us are very selfish in motive. At least be selfish that you plant, at least for your sake, you plant at least one sapling or one plant so that you take oxygen, plant takes carbon dioxide and gives oxygen. So the same oxygen which is useful for you, you plant a tree you, where you get oxygen, you breathe in oxygen and you carbon dioxide. So this is a win-win situation for both us as well as the plants and trees, flora and fauna. So nature has given enough trees and plants, not only just for human beings. Human beings is just one species among 8.4 billion species and more. And, you know, animals, plants, they cannot literally, you know, practically come and plant. They do plant because, you know, they take seeds, they carry seeds and they help in pollination. They bury the seeds and they are animals, poor animals. You know, they are having, uh, they are contributing, they are growing forest. And we human beings claim ourselves as highly intellectual, highly educated, highly civilized, highly cultured, whatnot. And we do the most blunders on the planet. We are the most irresponsible persons on the planet. We have to learn, in spite of having so many qualifications, in spite of achieved so many awards, rewards, in spite of having achieved so much status, position, still we lack basic common sense that we need to protect the forest without which our survival is at stake. We have seen in COVID time how our friends were struggling for oxygen cylinders, for oxygen rators. Now, there is plenty of oxygen outside, but many people died because lack of oxygen. This is what the nature, when it strikes back. So, we are cutting down trees, not only in forest, but see, even in our houses also, we are cutting off, chopping off our trees and plants. And wherever we are planting, we are always thinking that what benefits it is going to give us. No matter what plant it is, what tree it is, it gives you oxygen. So that is the greatest benefit a plant or a tree is giving, whether it gives fruits or whether it gives flowers or anything edible or not, it gives oxygen, which is essential for every living being. And the second most thing, it cools the temperature. It absorbs the heat and, you know, it helps in controlling the temperature. So that is the second benefit. We get shade and a lot of birds and insects and other species take shelter on the trees and plants and they feed on them and they make their homes on them. So as we have already mentioned, we are not just one species on the planet. There are other species and they also have the right to life. So we cannot encroach upon their rights and their right to life. Because we are also one among those species, they also have equal rights for the life and then for the survival and for the growth and development. We need to protect the trees. We need to protect the nature and the ecosystems so that they also survive and thrive. But what we are doing, we are cutting off everything. Once we see, oh, this is not useful tree or useful plant, let's chop it off. We are more worried about, the, you know, leaves falling and other insects, other birds sitting on the tree or taking uh, shelter in tree and creating, you know, noise or, or we have to daily keep cleaning. All these silly things we are worried about. And we are losing the greatest benefits. 
So we need to be very open-minded, broad-minded. And we need to think that without nature, we cannot survive. Can you survive without a second? Without taking oxygen? And where this oxygen comes from? From the trees, from the plants. And you are killing the trees and plants. And you are expecting oxygen. Where will it come from? Tomorrow, like today, we are buying water, drinking water. Today, we are buying gas, cooking gas. Today, we are buying uh, fuel and gas for our vehicles. Tomorrow, a day will come. If we don't realize and act now, tomorrow, we have to buy oxygen cylinders for every family member. Without that, you cannot even sit in your own home like we have in spacecraft, space stations, oxygen generators installed in submarines. A day will come soon, even our offices, our homes, our buses, vehicles will come with oxygen generators without which you cannot even live without a mask attached to oxygen generator. Now, who is responsible for this? Whose irresponsibility is this? Whose negligence is this? It is our responsibility, our irresponsibility, our lack of accountability, our negligence that we are contributing to deforestation, cutting, chopping of trees. And this is causing a lot of other issues, including climate change. So it's a high time, this is a monsoon time. So let's take this opportunity to plant as many trees as possible. We should ensure that we have at least one plant or a tree on our name as long as we are there. And even in the memory of our deceased, we have to ensure that we plant a tree. And this is this three days is an opportunity where you know we utilize and come forward with what you have done and showcase it so that others get inspired and as a token of gratitude we are also giving a certificate of your efforts as a token of gratitude so this is the first day so many have not been aware we had more than 100 plus registrations, though it was uh, circulated in a very short notice. But unfortunately, we see uh, very less. But less is not always less. Less is always a significant. No, it's not always about it. quantity, but it's always about quality. How significant the audience is, how significant the participant is, that is more important. Quality is more important than quantity. Now having so much of 800 billion plus population on the planet who are not contributing, what is the use? They are destroying the planet. Now how many are really contributing? Not even 1 million people. Because of them today, the planet is able to survive. So, how we are going to contribute? So, this is an opportunity where we can contribute to our rich ecosystems and our nature and planet. And apart from that, today, let's look at the various statistics of forests in India. As per the recent report, India State of Forest Report 2021, the recorded forest areas, in short known as RFAs in states and UTs, Union Territories, we'll just have a glance what we should have and what we have right now and where is the huge gap. 
So when we look at uh, in an alphabetical order for each state, Andhra Pradesh has a geographical area of 1,62,968 where the recorded forest is 31,959. kilometers and in that we have reserved forest and uh, we have other forests that is planted forest or urban forestry, social forestry and all included we have 5000 69 and other unclassed 230. So these are the different categories of forest and a total of 37,258 kilometers, square kilometers. So that is when comparative to the total geographical area of the entire state, the percentage of forest is 22.86. Actually, we need to have a green cover of 75 to 80%. That is where our sustainable development lies. But today we are facing because we it became reverse. We don't even have 25% of natural resources left on the planet. That much we have consumed, exploited, and today, and where will the future generation survive? Now, where we will survive without any natural resources? Our destructive development, the science and technology that is used for the destruction, devastation, has created so much destruction that we lost, we are losing our natural resources at a very high rate where the nature in we on planet cannot replenish. If you look at Arnachal Pradesh, of the total geographical area, 83,743 square kilometers, the total forest, uh, recorded forest area is 51,540. So these are north northeast areas which are rich in biodiversity and the population is less. And these are biodiversity hotspots. So they have good cover, at least because of them, you know, most of the planet is also able to maintain. So they have 61.55% of geographical area. And in Assa, we have 78,438 square kilometers of geographical area. Of that, 26,836 is recorded forest area, which comes to 34.21% of total geographical area is of forest. In Bihar, 94,163 square kilometers of geographical area, of which 59,816 square kilometers is of recorded forest area. That comes to around 78,438 uh, uh, square kilometers of geographical area. Of that, 26,836 square kilometers 
is of recorded forest areas which comes to around 34.2 percent to one percent of total geographical area and in Bihar 94,163 square kilometers of geographical area of which only 7,442 percent square kilometers is of recorded forest area that is 7.9 percent of geographical area which is very less in Bihar. It's not even 10 percent and where we will get oxygen. Just imagine what is going to be future. It's going to be horrible and in Chhattisgarh if we see 1,35,192 1, square kilometers of which 59,816 square kilometers is of forest. So that is coming to 44.25%. This is good percentage. In Delhi, if we see the geographical area is of 1,483 square kilometers of which only 103 square kilometers is of forest. That is coming to 6.95%. That is also very less. In Goa, if we take uh, Goa, 3,702 square kilometers of total geographical area, 1,271 square kilometers is of forest. So that comes to 34.33% of geographical area. And in Gujarat, which is of 1,96,244 square kilometers of geographical area, of which 21,870 square kilometers of forest area, that comes around 11.14% of geographical area area. This is forest cover. In Haryana, 44,212 square kilometer of geographical area of which 1,559 is the forest area in square kilometers. That comes around 3.53 percent of geographical area is forest. That is very less again. And when we look at Himachal Pradesh, 55,673 square kilometers of uh, geographical area of which 37,948 square kilometers of forest area which comes to 68.16 percentage. That's quite good more than 50 percent. And in Jharkhand of 79,716 square kilometers of total geographical area, 25,118 square kilometers is of forest area. That comes to around 31.51 percent of forest cover. This is also quite good. In Karnataka, of total 1,91,791 square kilometers, of which 38,284 square kilometers is only of forest. Karnataka is very rich uh, no, for the forest, but unfortunately, we see only 19.9% .9 of forest cover is only available in Karnataka. In Kerala, of 38,852 square kilometers, 11,522 square kilometers is forest cover. That is coming to 29.66% of total geographical area. In Madhya Pradesh, so 3 lakhs. 8,252 square kilometers, of which 
89 square kilometers is of forest. It is coming to 30.72% of forest cover. In Maharashtra, 3,7,713 square kilometers of which 61,952 is the forest the square kilometers is forest area, which comes to 20.13% forest cover. And in Manipur, of uh, 22,327 square kilometer of geographic area, 17,418 square kilometers is of forest area, which comes to 78.01%. As I told, these northeast states have rich uh, forests. Which, has, which are also very well recognized as biodiversity hotspots. And when coming to Meghalaya, of 22,429 square kilometers of geographical area, 9,496 kilometers is of forest cover, which comes to around 42.34% of total forest cover. In Mizoram, 21,081 square kilometers of geographical area, of which 7,479 square kilometers is of forest that is coming to around 35.48% of forest cover comparatively to geographical area. Nagaland, 16,579 square kilometers, of which 8,623 square kilometers is of forest area, which is coming to 52.01% of forest cover. In Odisha, 1,55,707 square kilometers of geographical area, of which 61,204 square kilometers is of forest area that is coming to 39.31% forest cover. In Punjab of 50,362 square kilometers, 3,084 square kilometers is of forest. It is also very low, which is coming to 6.12% of forest cover. In Rajasthan, of 3,42,239 square kilometers of geographical area, of which 32,863 square kilometers is of forest area, coming to 9.60% of forest. In Sikkim, of 7,096 square kilometers, 5,841% uh, square kilometers is forest area, that is coming to 82.31%. That is a very good, you know, more than approximately 82% of the forest cover. So full of forests. And in Tamil Nadu, of 1,30,060 square kilometers, 23,188 Square kilometers is of forest area, so that is coming to 17.83% forest cover. In Telangana, of 1,12,077 square kilometers, 27,688 square kilometers is forest area, which is coming to 24.70% of forest cover. Coming to Tripura, 10,486 square kilometers of geographical area of which 6,294 square kilometers is of forest area that is coming to 60.02% of forest cover. Coming to Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, 2,40,928 square kilometers of geographical area of which 17,384 square kilometers is forest cover, forest area, that is coming to 7.22% of forest cover. 
coming to Uttarakhand, 53,483 square kilometers of geographical area, of which 38,000 square kilometers is of forest cover. So they also have rich forests, which is coming to 71.05% of forest cover. And in West Bengal, of 88,752 square kilometers, 11,879 square kilometers is the forest area, which is coming to 13.38% 13, 13 forest cover. In Andaman and Nicobar Islands, of 8,249 square kilometers, 7,171 square kilometers is of forest area, which is coming to 86.93% of forest cover. So Andaman Nicobar Islands is also full of forest. And in coming to Chandigarh, of 114 square kilometers, 35 square kilometers is of forest area, which is coming to 30.70% of the forest cover. And coming to Dadra, Nagar, Haveli, and Daman and Diu, 602 square kilometers of geographical area of which 214 square kilometers is of forest area that is coming to 35.55% of forest cover. Jammu and Kashmir and also Ladakh combined is of 2,22,236 square kilometers of which 20,000 206 square kilometers is of forest area, which is coming to 36.98% of forest cover. And in Lakshadweep of 30 square kilometers, there is zero forest cover. And in Puducherry, there is Pondicherry, of 490 square kilometers, 13, only 13 square kilometers is of forest, that is 2.65%. So if you look at all the states and union territories of the nation, when we look at India as a whole, it has a geographical area of 32 lakhs, 87,469 square kilometers of geographical area of which only 7,75,288 square kilometers is of forest area. That is only 23.58% forest cover, which is very less than required. Imagine it is just 23% and soon very soon these forests are going to disappear. What will happen? The flora and fauna, biodiversity, ecosystems all will disappear. No forest, no rain. No rain, no water. No water, what will happen? That's all, no civilization. All our civilizations, if we see in the civilization, started along the banks of rivers and we cannot drink the ocean water. Again, it has to be desalinated and even it has high metals and other things in water that has to be purified. So everything we need to pay. Now, no forest, no oxygen. Now we have to pay as we have to pay for drinking water. We also need to pay for the oxygen. So we we are going to create misfortune for ourselves. So it's a high time we realize that, you know, we need to take care of our forest. Otherwise, soon we will not have anything left for us. Forget about our future generations. And our children will have nothing, no forest at all. 
So no forests, no flora, fauna, no tigers, no animals, wildlife animals. They will never see them. So this is what, can we call this as a sustainable development, at least a development. We are exploiting beyond what is required. So this is creating a lot of issues. So as forest gets depleted, so the flora and fauna. If we see the Global Forest Reserve Assessment, in short known as GFRA, when compared to Indian forest, when compared to forest resources in the world, which is taken at five-year intervals. The latest report of GFRA was also published in the year 2020. 20 and the next bill is due on 2025. That is after two years. Here, we can see the top 10 countries for forest area across the world. If we look at the statistics, the lowest forest cover among the 10 countries is Australia. Australia with forest area in hectares is 1,34,000. 5 hectares of which only 3% of entire forest world forest area in the world and when compared to countries geographical area it is coming to 17.4% forest cover so that is the lowest and when we look at the top 10 countries first is russian federation with 8 lakhs 15312 hectares of forest area which is of 20% of the world forest area. And when we look at the country statistics, it's 49.8% of the geographical area is forest. So that is forest cover. The second country is Brazil of 4,96,620 hectares, which is 12% of the entire world forest area and has a countrywide coverage of 59.4%. And uh, the third country, Canada, which has a forest area of 3,46,928 hectares which is of 9% of the total world forest area. So within the country, it has forest cover of 38.7% of total geographical area. The fourth country, USA, has a forest cover of 3,9795 hectares, which is 8% of the total world forest area. Within the country, 33.9% is a forest cover. So fifth nation, China, which has a forest cover of 2,19,978, uh, which comprises of 5% of the total world forest area and 23.3% of total geographical area in country. In Australia, of, of forest area, 
one lakh thirty four thousand five hectares, which accounts to three percent of the world forest area, and the, within the country, the forest. Uh, percentage forest area forest cover is 17.4 percent coming to democratic republic of the congo which has 1000 1 lakh 26155 square kilo uh, i mean hectares of forest area which is 3% of the world forest area and within the area within the country the forest cover is 55.6%. And the next country, Indonesia, which has a forest cover of 92,133 hectares, which comes around 2% of the world forest area. And within the country, it has 49.1% forest cover of total geographical area. In Peru, 72,330 hectares of forest area, which amounts to 2% of the forest world area. And within country, it's 56.5% of the total country area. And last, among top 10, the 10th country is India, which has the least forest cover, that is 72,160 hectares. We have huge population. See, we are the highest populated country in India and we are having the lowest forest cover. So where will get oxygen for all these people who are living in our nation? This is just the one factor. There are various other factors. So we'll look at. So the entire India's forest cover is just 2% of the world forest area. We are not even having 2% of the entire forest area in the world. Our entire forests in India are not even 2% of the world forest area. So it is a great, it is highly important that we need to seriously work on increasing forest area. So that is coming to, within the country, if you look at, we have 24.3% of forest cover of total geographical area in India. So when we totally see on the planet or the top 10 countries, cumulatively, we have for this top 10 countries, we have four lakhs 85,000 438 hectares, which is constituting to 66% of the world forest area. Now, if you see, now we have seen what is the present state of forest in different nations. And at least we are fortunate that we are in top 10. But it's a high time that we are still at a greater risk. When we look at top 10 countries for average annual net gain in the forest area, for past decade, 2010 to 2020, if you see in China, as per the you know top 10, China has gained 1,937 hectares of forest 
when compared to 2010, which is 0.93% growth. And Australia, 446 hectares, which is 0.34% of forest gain when compared to 2010. In India, which stands at third position, has gained 266 hectares of forest, which is 0.38% of the forest area gain as compared to 2010 statistics. Similarly, child with, has gained 149 hectares of forest area, and Vietnam 126 hectares of forest area, and Turkey 114 hectares and USA it has gained 108 hectares and in France it has gained 83 hectares, Italy 54 hectares and Romania 41 hectares. If we look at the top 10 countries for volume of forest growing stock, so Brazil starts and steps on the top with 1,20,358 metric cubic. So here also, when we look at top 10 countries, India is not there in the list of top 10. The top one country is Brazil with growing stock of 1,20,358 meter. So these are the statistics. Of forest cover area. And which are, if not protected, if not conserved, and if not promoted soon, we lose the available 20 plus percent of forest. And we will become highly vulnerable for various diseases and disasters and disasters. So as we are talking about forest cover, Forest cover refers to the extent of land area that is covered by the forest resources in the country. So, Forest Survey of India initiated assessment of forest cover of the country for the first time in the year 1987. And since then, wall-to-wall -wall forest cover mapping, FCM, of the country is carried out using remote sensing-based methodology at biannual interval. So far, 16 cycles have been completed and the current assessment is 17 in the series of continuous forest cover mapping in the country. All lands more than one hectare of in area with a tree canopy density of more than 10%, including tree orchards, bamboos, palms,
So forest cover is classified in terms of canopy density classes. So we have different classes like very dense forest with all lands with tree canopy density of 70% and above and moderately dense forest with all lands with tree canopy density of 40% and more but less than 70%. And we have another class open forest, all lands with tree canopy density of 10% and more, but less than 40%. And we have scrub class where forest lands with canopy density less than 10% and non-forest class lands not included in any of the above classes includes water. So, based on these uh, classifications or classes, when we look at the statistics, the forest cover of India in square kilometers, we have a very dense forest, which is of 99,779 square kilometers, which comes comes to 3.04 percent of percentage of geographical area and moderately dense forest is of 3000 sorry 3 lakhs 6890 square kilometers which comes to 9.33 percentage of geographical area and uh, when coming to open forest 3,7120 square kilometers of which is coming around 9.34 percent of geographical area and total forest cover is 7,13,789 square kilometer which amounts to 21.7% of geographical area. And in scrub, 46,539. And if we see the scrub, the total area is 46,539 square kilometers, which is 1.42% of the geographical area. And non-forest, the area is 25 lakhs 27,141 square kilometers, of which 76.87 percentage of geographical area.
So these are the various statistics and we can go in deep also, in depth. But uh, let's restrict ourselves. So anyone uh, from the, let's uh, give some time to our friends, participants also. If anyone would like to present, if you have planted or if you are maintaining any plant, if you want to present, you can share your details, raise your hand. Can leave your details in chat box, your name, designation, organization, your email, contact number. You are just pulsing, you can unmute yourself. Now raise your hand. Hello. You are just pulsing. Yeah, yeah. The statistics were wonderful, but uh, I was just wondering, like I, I just wanted to point out one thing. Definitely our area uh, might be come in forestry, but we also have to consider the population that we are having and also the farmlands, which has to be utilized in a right manner. Uh, there is a scope of agri-forestry for us, but the challenge is uh, switching of farm, farm pattern from general farming to agroforestry. So I think that is, that is the main concern. In urban sector, if you see like, you know, the, the opportunity is very less of, uh, you know, uh, doing, uh, increasing our trees also because Instead of increasing the tree levels, we are uh, more into development and more into destruction of the uh, nature. So that's the that's the major challenge we are facing today in India. Uh, uh, definitely, as you have said, you know, even uh, we have as per, uh, uh, have an organization called Social Active Youth in Action, and we also have, have a company called Nature Partners Private Limited. Uh, we are trying to push up, you know, more of. Uh, bamboo plantation because we believe that bamboo can give more oxygen than any other plant and in a fast manner. So we're pushing up, we are working up, we are trying to uh, push, uh, you know, gram panchayas, we are pushing up uh, uh, a few government agencies like municipal corporation to plant more bamboos in their region so that it can have, you know, some supportive measures we can have from that part. So uh, we are also uh, in Kerala and Maharashtra. These are the two regions we are working and just trying to put up our things, you know, uh, that uh, at least oxygen level can increase. So that is what we are doing presently. I just wanted to uh, add that part. But uh, agroforestry is what need to be more you know, focused and uh, I think that will only bring in more changes what we actually need. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jaspalji. Uh, maybe if time permits, you can join tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and also make a presentation so that uh, you know, more people are aware of it and uh, how you are working and uh, how it has created impact so that we all can also learn. As you rightly pointed out, uh, you know, uh, we all, even... Uh, Forestry, the statistics includes all, uh, you know, not just uh, natural forest, but also the social forestry, urban forestry, even part of agroforestry also. So all included. Uh, but again, uh, you know, uh, 
these are of uh, not of uh, see the temporary arrangements which are making uh, is not of a permanent nature so if unless and until it is of a long term uh, benefit and long term project and we are maintaining it so it doesn't uh, yield that kind of benefit so that is one concern and yes definitely in whatever way we can uh, we all need to contribute in whatever kind of forestry uh, we can take it up thank you for uh, your contribution thank you thank you sir so as part of this one mahotsav we have invited uh, if you have taken up any plantation even at your home even it may be balcony or a terrace so we are inviting people to share photographs or videos of that and you can talk about it because this is for everyone it's not a uh, plan for you know lecture mode or something like that so everyone can use this opportunity to from tomorrow onwards at least uh, i will also send a reminder to everyone those who have registered so do participate and you can invite your children your parents also they might be having some plant growing some plant or sapling in your home in your flat in your residence so you can invite them join them there is no qualification or no minimum qualification or meaning minimum literacy level only thing you know you need to be planting a sapling or a tree or a plant or you are taking care of any plant so that is enough you can come and discuss share with us and inspire others also and you will also be getting a certificate also so in that way we can encourage each other motivate each other and also promote this plantation so let's today plant uh, if not now uh, you know in the night tomorrow early morning you can prepare one sapling you can take it from your garden you can put it and take photo and video and you can present tomorrow so that is one way where we all can do it Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yes, for everyone, we all can start from tomorrow. So today we will end it here because initially we thought everyone will come up with their presentation. I mean, sharing of their plantation. So that's why we did not have any sessions because more we would like to give more time to. our friends only so that they come up with certain things we'll also plan few sessions tomorrow also to compensate if there is any so we will conclude it here and we will come up tomorrow we encourage everyone we request in fact everyone appeal to everyone plant a sapling don't worry whether it is a small or big doesn't matter as long as you are planting something which is beneficial so we request everyone to fill the feedback form which is raised in the form of votes and we will all meet tomorrow with few presentations along with insights from our friends and their experiences of plantation you can talk about what kind of plant or a tree or a sapling you have planted and its name and its benefits and what is the age and other things so it will inspire other souls so everyone quickly fill up the feedback form which has been raised in the form of polls it is mandatory 
every day attendance is being taken automatically and based on the attendance registration form has been already circulated those who have not registered we have shared the registration form in the chat box we request you to register and also ask your friends to register and you can present participate based on the attendance will be issuing participation certificates and also those who are presenting or those who are sharing their details about their saplings they will also get the presentation certificate so you can utilize tomorrow and day after tomorrow is also there so you can utilize this opportunity for your presentations and participation thank you everyone for joining us you all tomorrow Six o'clock. Take care. Good night. Make sure before you leave, you fill up the feedback. Form.